Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. It is Tuesday, September 29th, 2020. <laughs> Another month bites the dust. <laughs> Another month bites the dust. <laughs> oh, man. Our quote of the day. When we refer to the good fight, we're not talking about, wow, that was a real killing of the music, Kels. <laughs> Wow. Oh my God! What happened to the, like the the wind down? Okay, wait. Let no me. No pun intended. I need to loop it. Just Excuse like a, me. No, it's like you wind it down when Maria starts the quote. Well, Ready? Usually, Let's try this again. Okay, okay, okay. Ready, Maria? Yeah. Our quote of the day, guys. When we refer to the good fight, no, you're supposed to have already started winding it down at that Come point. So you can give hear me, it. Give me, give me some time. No, no, no. You can't. There's no time there. Okay, you got to hear the quote. The quote's more important than the music. We open with the music. Oh my gosh, this is day, Kelsey, day of. <laughs> Let's start again. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> okay. What, our quote of the day, guys, when we refer to the good fight, we're not talking about one standalone argument or little disagreements. She's not getting my cue. I'm, I'm going the cue. down. No, 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 look, look, look. Do you see that? When we refer to the good fight, that's like inquire when they went. I remember that. I remember and then that. they grab it. That means stop. Okay, so here we go again. Ready? Start again. Oh my God. Our quote our quote of the day, when we refer to the good fight, we're not talking about one standalone argument or little disagreements. We're talking about the idea of reimagining your relationship as something you don't fight against, but fight for. Jana Kramer, our guest today. Very excited to be chatting with her mm-hmm. and her husband, Mike Cosson, to discuss their new book, The Good Fight, which offers practical, practical advice for couples to stick it out even when the times are really tough and they are uh, examples of that because they have gone through some really tough times together and figured it out. She's also a Dancing with the Stars alumni and a One Tree Hill alumni so we got lots to talk about there as well. Thank you guys as always for joining us. Um, If you don't like how Kelsey lowered the music you can reach us (laughs) at our Instagram account Better Together with Maria. I'm like (laughs) okay I do have to say Oh, I pulled that me. one from the Rancho studio and the music. Yeah, yeah, that I one, like it. Yeah, that was the one you like. Yeah, but it only has a thirty second life, so that's why it cut out so burr, abruptly. Oh, yeah. So that's that was a struggle because yeah, we never have that issue. No, it never happens. But that was interesting. I was like, oh, hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now we know. When you know better, you get better. You'll that's put right. that shit on loop. That's right. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. If you haven't clicked subscribe on YouTube, please do. We're almost at 30,000. You could be the one to put Ooh. us over the edge. Ooh, how exciting. And we do happy dances. When we when we get to 30,000, we're doing a happy oh, dance. We're going to put it on better together. Um, and if you haven't joined us on Patreon, uh, just click the link tree in Better Together with Maria's Instagram or my Instagram at Maria Menounos and join us. It's super easy. You just click and you get in. Um, tonight, actually, we're doing our second workshop with Catherine. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, shoot. I'm it's okay. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting the days confused. But anyway, so you still have time. How about that? Yes. Catherine Woodward Thomas, she wrote Conscious Uncoupling. We're gonna be doing uh, some meditations to help us with triggering emotions and we're gonna do a QA. It's gonna be exciting. So join us on Patreon. We also get ad free content there and other content and we're gonna be doing some cool giveaways in there. So uh, join us over there. Um, today's our last day to RSVP for that event. Uh, special shout out to our listener, Jan, who is suffering from uh, a little fracture of sorts, That's it sounds right. like. Yes, she is. Um, she Jan. sends us the cutest videos of her Maltese talking to us. So apparently Jan had a um, girls night in her driveway and had many margaritas like <laughs> I would and fell and hurt herself. So Jan. we're sending you well wishes and love. That's right. And hopefully you'll get better soon. Um, Please keep the dog videos coming. And uh, a special shout out to another one of our listeners. Why is her name escaping me? Who helped you this weekend? Stephanie. Stephanie. Stephanie, thank you so much for offering your marketing advice and help. Um, You are the epitome of Better Together. Truly. um, Because you really inspired us and shared so much of your talents and gifts with us. So thank you. And Thank you to everybody who offers help and, and assistance because we are not above needing it. Trust me. We are trying to do this mm-hmm. um, and trying to make this a place for everybody to get better in all areas. And we're actually going to start expanding too. I was realizing I'm like on my TikTok and, and even on my Instagram, I know everybody always wants to know about like beauty and hair and all this stuff. And I'm like, why am I omitting this stuff? It doesn't just have to be 
so health focused. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start branching out into some of that stuff. We're also asking your advice on what you would like to see more of or less of on the show. I have been feeling like we have so many incredible experts that it's like a lot to get through. So we're going to keep it a daily experience. But I think what we're going to do is try to keep it to like one or two experts a week. And we'll have like two kind of talk formats a week. So we can even have a chance to digest Mm -hmm. some of these amazing experts and see how we're applying it into our lives. Um, And right now we just don't even have time to do that. So I hope you guys like that. If you want us to go back to the other way, just tell us and we will. It's it's easy for us and we enjoy it. Thank you everyone for your prayers for my mom. Mm -hmm. We got uh, a good stable report yesterday on her MRI, which was very exciting. You know, you like... I was like kind of on pins and needles all day and um, the good news is is I've I've learned so much that I could tell she didn't have any new symptoms so I was feeling good about where she was Mm -hmm. Um, but it was a definite huge sigh of relief that she's stable everything looks the same as it did a month ago when she did her last MRI Um, there was some like maybe troubling stuff on that that I think we're we're we've stabilized which is good so um that means she'll be able to come home for Thanksgiving Yay. which is exciting so that is Very uh, exciting. on the agenda I do um I have two things to ask you guys today I already started asking Kelsey this <laughs> so Jeff you're on the hot seat are you ready Uh oh yes okay so um Steven was here <laughs> And I had to text him and be like, Steven, you need to clean the toilet. You left the seat up and there's piss all over it. Forgive me, everybody, for oh the God. disgusting nature of the conversation right now. And I said, this is disgusting. I'm not your roommate. You are my guest and this is gross. And he was like, oh, my God, I'm mortified. I'm so sorry. And then I was telling Kevin, I go, did parents not teach their kids to be clean in this generation? I don't understand. He goes, Maria. I have to go in and clean Jeff's office. He goes, he had four coffee cups strewn across the floor. And I've been in your office, so I know you, I don't know what happens. Like, I kind of feel like you do, like, you know how Wonder Woman, was it Wonder Woman? Yeah, she turns and like this whole thing spins around and there's like a, like a, like a tornado (laughs) of thing. I feel like that's how you might work in there. And I kind of want to put a camera in there to see how it all comes together. Oh, no, well, like, let's turn it on. I kind of want to just study you in your natural habitat <laughs> oh and see what oh happens. <laughs> but I am truly curious <laughs> to know, did your parents make you clean up after yourself? They definitely did. And I feel bad. I like, I feel bad that Kev went in there to clean up after me. This is and a I funny shaming, to- by the way, but it really is to get to the bottom of your generation's right. lack of cleanliness and your your ability to live like that is fascinating to me. Like when I was at one point, I went into Kelsey's room <laughs> to give her something and literally every article of clothing she owned was either on the bed or on the floor. There were not on the floor. 15,000 mugs on the counter okay. with tea bags and whatever. And I'm like, molds growing out of the. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm obviously. I, I'm going a little higher for fun, but I was like, how do you live like this? This can't be good for your psyche. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I don't know. And it's fine. And I'm like, I was telling her, I said that my mom was a kitchen Nazi. So like if there's ever stuff on the table, I always think about it. Cause I do like, I kind of like to have my stuff like spread out on the table. So I always, I'll look at it. I'm like, Ooh, Deb would not have liked that. So I'm going to clean it up or yeah. like the Me dishes and Deb are that very similar. You are. But my room, she was always <laughs> like, if you want to live in your own filth, be my guest. And I wouldn't say it's necessarily like. Cause you're comparing yourself to the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Millennials. Exactly. But um, the tea bag. Yeah. I do leave my tea or my mugs in there. So I will say that. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's funny at home i'm like very very clean because it means a lot to laura like she is someone who only functions in cleanliness like yeah. she can't um but i think i'm someone who like so in my that, office yeah, you think it's okay to just i know i know i'm hearing just, it now you know, it's bad you know just um, go for it just be you <laughs> I, I would never out, leave food out. what i make sure to never leave food or anything that's like but like papers or empty things i think like 
maybe my first instinct wouldn't be to like throw that away right away but like um, the coffee that's still in there attracts ants and like is there, when you there had still in there? and then when you have like the microwave trays and you just leave them there like there's food remnants in there that ants yeah, like right. like so <laughs> i don't understand well i should pivot and start to try <laughs> that stuff away, I should pivot. But, listen um like i said this isn't a tag this is really oh, i'm truly trying to get and it's freaking hilarious to me but i truly want to understand like how did your parents raise you to like did they say you have to clean your room did they say you have to like do any chores nothing was no, chores they, a word they actually did really you know did chores sometimes i wonder moment. if my lack of cleanliness <laughs> and organization is a rebellion against that like no i wonder oh. i actually wonder yeah. that like listen my mom made me do everything in the house right mm. like i Greek daughters had to clean up after the Greek boys and the dads and stuff like that. So um, I I get the rebellion, but I also really appreciate living in a clean space. Mm -hmm. And if it's not clean, mm -hmm. I'm like, Laura, I start to lose my mind. Like, uh, I start to self, you know, combust. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Gretchen Rubin talked about, like, there are some people who, that has to be clean. And there's some people who are like clutter blind. Which yeah. means, like, even though it's bothering you, and granted, I know I need to be cleaning up because I do not want to, like, put the office in danger. Like, that's what's important is making sure that <laughs> yeah. there's no food rats. or anything in there. Yeah, exactly. And they're all over the place. Yeah. Um, but I do get lonely in there, so maybe some company with some animals might be sort of nice. But... Oh my god! So well, that was wondering maybe that was an intention maybe that's too. That's it. That's hilarious. Intentionally drawing the rats. Dead. Oh my god. Dead. Um, <laughs> but sometimes like... when things are too clean, <laughs> the I three feel of like... you. I'm like. <laughs> Mine wasn't know, a rebellion. No, mine definitely wasn't a rebellion. My mom made us clean. So maybe it is a rebellion. No. I don't know. I think it was just it's who different you spaces. were, right? Like yeah. cuz you're you just yeah. adapted to what she wanted so that you wouldn't have arguments, totally. but then in your own space you were a hot yeah, mess. Yeah, cuz that's I was thinking about it later and I was like, well, I have lived by myself for a long time. Oh, I got a peek of that so. room. So her roommate went to go to her apartment to okay. get her some stuff. Well, for and she gave a sneak peek, and, ah! and I started freaking to out. And Kelsey fair, goes, "Don't show Maria any more of my room." <laughs> to be fair, I have to say we kind of left like on a whim. So I was like, "Let's throw everything." So that's kind of how it was left. I left on a whim too. And if yeah, you okay, see yeah, my I know. Closet, yours would be pretty. It would I was be like, very "What do I pack? Clean. Do I pack this or that or that?" Blah, blah, blah. So that. It's usually a little bit better than that, but still. But you're right. Like I mean, 1%. you're right. <laughs> like two like percent, maybe two percent. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep it real. Listen, our guests today keep it real. That's yeah. true. Right? We gotta so keep. We it gotta real. keep it real. We can't you're right. be like you're sugarcoating right. shit. You're Just right. own your shit. Own your shit. I am a hot mess slob. I'm a hot mess slob <laughs> in my room. In my room. <laughs> Everywhere oh, else, I try and keep bad. less hot mess lobby. Yeah, it's, it's so funny. <laughs> and listen, I understand, like, I am of hoarder descent, and so I really fight hard. Yeah, no, I'm for sure. And hoarder. and I can be sloppy. Like, Kevin's even worse than me. So, like, I'll leave some dishes in the sink, and he'll, like, lose his mind. But I'm like, <laughs> boo. Boo. I've earned my right to leave a couple of things in the in the Truth. sink. True. Um, and so I think it's it's interesting, like how how we were raised and how you know we either rebel or we yeah you know Stick still live it. in terror and yeah. and then also like I still just your generation is so okay with like not showering and like <laughs> just that, that leaving piss understand. all over the seats. But that's a guy thing, the yeah. piss on the seats. But I'm like I'm not having it in my house. Thanks, love you. Yeah, no, that's gross. Hygiene for me, that has to be a priority. I feel like I'm cluttered, but I don't think I'm dirty. I feel like there's a big difference. There's sloppy and I then there's dirty. I agree, Jeff. Are there close-ups on this show? <laughs> no, I agree. I would say the same thing. I would always say there's people you, you live with that are messy or dirty, and there's totally a difference. Yeah. I will say we, you know, we're kind of like experts on your generation because we've worked with thousands yeah. of you guys now. It's true at after buzz and it's amazing kevin would come home and he's like i actually have to tell people like you should consider showering you should consider washing your clothes maybe more than once a month like there is an like uh, it's it's amazing to me i don't get it i don't get it that's I gross that's just gross <laughs> that's gross well and i'm obsessed with flossing and brushing my teeth because i had braces for so long so mm -hmm. like 
I am like a crazy flosser. I'm like a three times a day, like because Dang. I know how expensive it was to get my mouth fine. So like I really try to take care of that. Oh my gosh! Wait, I have to read the chat really quick. Oh, Stephanie said things. my husband's mom did all the cleaning for him. He has no cleaning habits. I feel like that's true. I mean, I didn't grow up with boys in my family, but I feel like maybe you were the boy. Oh, you were the boy. You said I was that. the boy. Yeah, I was the boy. But I also like she forced <laughs> us to clean. So. But thank you, Deb. <laughs> thanks, Mom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to, when we were little, she would give us um, rags to put on our feet and she would like have us ice skate oh, and like funny. and mop. And yeah, that was you were Swiffers before Swiffers. Exactly. Exactly. Right? It was really fun. Maybe we should do that here. Yeah. I mean, we get <laughs> Swiffers now. That's true. <clears throat> but, um, anywho, well, anywho, let's talk. One last time, this is our our last day with our amazing Thrive partners. So, of course, if you are fans of the show, you know that I'm a super fan of Thrive Market. And I really love partnering with them over the last few weeks because um, I think they are just amazing. They have really made healthy living easy for me and for everyone else. And so it's our last week. So listen up. Of course, they provide you with you know, your favorite organic staples like pantry items, clean beauty products, non-toxic home goods, right at your fingertips. It's one-stop shop. Thrive Market features only the world's highest quality products. And I really appreciate that from them because I don't want to have to do all the homework. Um, And, you know, they, of course, have a small membership fee. But what's great about that is you get bulk prices on premium upscale items. It gives you 25 to 50% off retail. So those savings add up, guys. Go to thrivemarket.com backslash better together to check it out. Uh, First timers are going to get a free gift up to $24 in value. And, oh, by the way, we need to reorder our cinnamon. We're almost out of cinnamon. Um, Okay, great. Um, Thanks, Kels. If you're already a Thrive member, it still helps us if you go through our landing page. So just make sure you're already logged in and then go to thrivemarket.com backslash better together and shop away. That way you're still helping us and helping the show. And we're appreciative of that. And I know a lot of you have been curious over the last month, but haven't taken that step. It's super easy. The link to my landing page is the top line of this episode. So um, even just clicking that, will link you to drive traffic to the site and you really help us. So if you can take 30 seconds, click the link in the description and check it out. We would appreciate it. And trust me, you will be very happy with your Thrive deliveries, just like me. Ooh, you know, it was really cool, actually. So when we went apple picking the other day. Yeah. Um, that's when I really got to like shine with my fruit spray that I bought from them (gasps) so for some reason I forgot to use it on the kale (laughs) Mm. because by the time we're eating the kale I'm so hungry but I used it on all the apples so you you spray it on and it takes all the bacteria and anything off and it's all natural and then you rinse it off and you're like yes any of the kale I cut I used it so because I like it sitting up there it reminds me yeah yeah, I keep it on the windowsill in mm-hmm. front of the sink. Mm-hmm. So, okay, cool. Well, you've been using it. Actually, you've made the salads as of yeah. recently. So, she's been doing a good job. We have Thank our kale you. recipe up where on TikTok? No, not yet. They have to wait for GSTV. Oh, so at your gas station, Pom, mm-hmm. soon you will be seeing my kale salad, like super quick recipe. Oh, so good. Because we busy. So, mm-hmm. I have figured out with uh, a couple of snaps how to make the best salad. Super easy and delicious yeah. and healthy. Very okay, good. let's get to our guests. I'm really excited. So Jana Kramer and Mike Cosson, both known for big careers in entertainment and professional football, have weathered quite a journey in their brave and public fight for a beautiful marriage. Um, in their new book, The Good Fight, they outline how they fought for their marriage through struggles on both sides of the table. And they offer practical advice so you can do the same. I think they're just popping <laughs> in right now. Hi, Jana. Looks like you guys might be muted. This is so 2020 right now. Here we are. There they are. Hi, guys. Hi, hi. How are you? How are you? You guys are coming to us from that gorgeous house I saw in Nashville. Uh, yes, yes, we're in Nashville. Um, it's uh, it's getting chilly out here, so we're excited. Fall is finally here. So the leaves are changing there, right? Yes, they are. They're changing here too. It is so beautiful. I'm in Connecticut right now. Connecticut. Why are you in Connecticut? So it's a long story. Uh, We left for like a three-day trip to Florida to speak at a Tony Robbins seminar. 
And then last minute decided I have to go to my house in Connecticut and kind of like deal with some stuff. And so we drove up from Florida Mm -hmm. and that was mid July, guys. (laughs) Yeah, we left the 14th of July. And, um, And so I started taking on all the things that needed to be done here, like my parents' car needed, you know, an oil change and we needed, you know, the gate fix and we needed all this stuff done. And they really desperately want to come back here. They're at my house in LA right now with my husband. So I started taking on all these projects that my dad couldn't get done. My mom has brain cancer. It's been like a long four years of just, you know, trying to survive and thrive. So I was like, I'm going to get everything done for them. Well, like, it's going to be October in a second. And now I don't want to leave because it's so beautiful. And I've really enjoyed my peace. And I feel like you guys probably have that same feeling in Nashville that LA just doesn't give you. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we, we do miss LA cause we just moved here a year ago back from LA, but just with everything going on there, <laughs> it's kind of nice now that you know, we're here, feels a little safer, um, and we can, you know, be outside without having to worry about certain things. And so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're very happy that we came back. The timing was pretty great on our end. Um, cause I can't imagine being quarantined and the riots and the fires mm-hmm. and just everything going on. It's like, man, we're, we're, we're blessed to be in Nashville right now. For well, sure. and with COVID, I mean, there's still no indoor dining. There's nothing like, it's kind of a ghost town. I feel like yeah, we just had a friend who came back, um, who just came back from LA, and I thought she was gonna definitely move back. And she's like, no, she's like, we made the right decision. We're staying here in Nashville. She's like, because we couldn't even go out anywhere to eat. And it's like, that's why you love LA. It's amazing food and even the it's weather. amazing weather too, but if air quality is bad. So it's just, you know, there's so many different factors. I feel a lot of people are actually moving here to, to town. There's, every time I go on Instagram, it's another, another person moving to Nashville. So I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> no. Like, stay away. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, everybody is really kind of making moves because our industry doesn't really require us to be there anymore. And, and so that's why we did the move too. Yeah. Cause... You can find your bliss wherever it is and then do your thing from there and whatever. Like now it's all via zoom or whatever. Yeah, that was the same thing. I asked my acting managers, I was like, hey, do I have to be here anymore? Because everything's on tape right now. So what's, we're in this 1400 square foot house, you know, second kid, like we got to get out of here. And he's like, go. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So are you just putting yourself on tape for auditions? Are things like, are, are people auditioning right now? Um, there's very few, like I, I auditioned for this Channing Tatum movie, which I didn't get, but I put myself on tape for that and a few other things, but it's, it's not a lot, but it's fine. And we're keeping ourselves busy with, you know, our podcast and, you know, obviously the book stuff right now, but I'm hoping next year it starts to open up a little bit. Yeah. It's so surreal. You guys like this whole year has been so surreal. Um, for you guys, obviously you just wrote a book together and you're so candid about your lives and your relationship and the ups and the downs and um you know what's cool about that is you know when you're so honest people really connect and you guys won you know podcast award and everything congratulations by the way um with that comes the complete opposite right so people like love you and then there's people who have such deep opinions um how is that part to deal with like when I go into your podcast reviews I mean you guys have like thousands and thousands of reviews and so many more people than not say amazing things but then there are these people who are really like harsh and opinionated and I'm like my stomach like I was like getting sick yeah it's hard especially they're like she's crazy it's not him it's her and this and that and the other and it's like you know people are gonna have their opinions um we know the we know the truth we know our hearts and i think that's where we were i was scared mostly for the book because we put so much of our heart into the book that you know i can understand on the podcast where i can be um i can be sarcastic and that tone might be misinterpreted Mm -hmm. i get that that's a part of my character defect i guess where sometimes i can be a little bit harsher at times I mean well from it, but it comes out maybe the wrong way, or I think it's funny and someone else doesn't think it's funny. So I get when people can misread that. But with the book, I was like, man, this is, this is just so honest and raw. And this is, this is, 
my heart. And I always say, get to know me and then you can judge me. If you mm -hmm. don't know me, if you haven't spent time with me, if we haven't clinked wine glasses, like don't judge me yet, give me a chance. And so I feel like this is my, this is that, you know, and if then they say they don't like me like that, that hurts. Cause that's just everything out there, you know, yeah. but well, Mike, do you get it? Like if she's being sarcastic, like me and my husband have, we've been together like 21 ish, almost 22 years. Um, so we have like our way, right? Like I make fun of him so hardcore <laughs> and then, but he thinks it's hilarious. Like, so we have this back and forth that we get and we love, but maybe other people would judge if they were watching. So you guys are putting it out there in a podcast when she is being sarcastic or whatever. How do you feel? Yeah, I know her well enough where I know when it's a passive sarcastic comment. And I also know when it's a joke. And majority of the time, it's it's her way of joking, of kind of poking fun and having fun with people. And but so it, it's because I know her so well, I, I know the difference. But I can understand why people wouldn't. You know what I mean? It can come across a certain way. But like Gina said, we don't. It's impossible to ignore every negative thing that's said, right? Especially when you're talking about things that we talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it is what it is. We know our truth, and like Gina said, we know our hearts. I had someone that tell uh, that told me, and it, this has kind of always stuck with me. He goes, "You're never going to get a hundred percent approval rate." He's like, "As much as you want it, you're never going to get that." And mm -hmm. it's like, and I, I she constantly was like challenge accepted. I, <laughs> <laughs> I will beat you down so you like me. But I mean, it's it's so true though. It's like even when like there's someone that I don't think that likes me, I'm like, "Hi, like you know, doing a hug." Like, and I just <laughs> I I just bury myself in the ground, and it's just it's almost embarrassing to like I, I see myself on the outside but yeah it's like you know you're not going to get that and it's it's hard but hopefully they read the book and then they they're like oh okay I think it's kind of the never-ending um goal for everybody we all want to be liked right mm -hmm. it's it's one of our kind of like human you know things it's a necessity we we're always trying for that but when you can start to realize that it's never going to happen. You're never going to have everybody like you. I'm still struggling with it. It is mm -hmm. not an easy thing. And then what you do is like, you're like, no, 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 look, but I'm a really nice person. <laughs> and then it's like, but no, they, for some reason, they're not connecting with you and they have their shit. It's them. It's not you sometimes. Um, it's really hard. It's funny. It's almost like its own superpower. Like I'll envy the people that are just be like, okay, they don't like me. I know. I'm like, how do I get what you have? How do I there's, not there's give a shit? A I'm like, sometimes that, to be that secure and it not, and it not come from a place of arrogance, but it come from a place of yeah confidence and just like okay, like, I know who I am and right. That's that. I think a lot of it for me though is just like childhood wounds, like because I never felt good enough. I think a lot of childhood wounds is what brings up stuff now in our in our thirties mm -hmm. and you know recognizing that like this is why it is affecting me for sure my five-year-olds just like love me <laughs> <laughs> totally no and by the way that's what we do on the show every day we're constantly bringing in experts to help us re-raise ourselves and unpack everything that's gone on that wasn't serving us or isn't serving us and kind of figure out a way to make peace with it because no one had a perfect childhood even the ones that you think might have had a perfect childhood everyone's mm -hmm. got their shit um and you know no one's got that you know perfect life there just doesn't exist i mean we saw it even with paris hilton's documentary everybody thinks she's you know this heiress she has this amazing life or whatever you know there's always something yeah mm -hmm. there's always something someone's struggling with and that's you know that's why instagram sometimes can skew people's opinions or make them more depressed because they think this person's perfect or has the best life and it's like no yeah. they have something they just they don't, they don't want to share it and that's okay. Yeah. And we just yeah. decided to share it. <laughs> yeah. And that's, but that's the biggest thing, like the most satisfaction we get from, you know, talking about what we talk about and releasing this book is all it takes is that one person to reach out and be like, because of your story, I don't feel alone. Yeah. And that just, that's so empowering for Jan oh and I. Oh my gosh. Tell them about that, that guy that randomly reached out to you. We don't even know how we got here, your email. Yeah. This, this guy reached out to me, him and his wife had just finished our book um, like two days ago and yeah, I don't know how he got my email, but he got it. And he emailed me and said, your book, y'all's book inspired me to come clean with my wife and, wow. you know, share the things that he had been doing 
And, you know, now they're in this rut and she's hundred percent convinced that she wants to leave and they have four kids. And I feel bad about that though. Now I'm like, Oh crap. Now hearing that I'm like, we just ruined the marriage. No, but we could also have saved it too, because sure. that stuff is going to eventually come out and there's, that's no way to live your life. So, you know, coming from someone who has held those demons in for so long. So I'm meeting with him next week to kind of talk about things because he's here local in Nashville, but it's just, you know, the fact that someone's willing to take that leap because mm -hmm. they're like, wow, these people have go through similar things. I'm going to do it too. So, you know, it's just, that's, that's all it takes for us to realize what we're doing is, is okay. You know, we're doing a good thing with what we're doing. So we want to help people. We want to help people yeah. and them sharing that with us helps us maybe even more than it does us helping them. Yeah. I wonder, so, I mean, obviously you guys have been really open about, you know, the infidelities and stuff, but Mike, had it gone the other way, do you think you would have been able to forgive as easily? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Here's the thing with that is <laughs> no one knows what they're going to do in that situation True. until they're in it, right? True. Because if anyone would have put all the things that happened on paper in front of Jana, Jana would have been like, yeah, I'm out, peace. Anyone probably mm -hmm. would. Um, so you just don't know until you're in that situation. I don't, I don't know. I'd like to think so because I love Jana. I love our life. I love our, you know, our kids. So, but I can't, you can't really give it a hundred percent answer on what would happen. Yeah. Not but Jana, Not, go ahead and uh, tell me. Chance. No. Uh-uh. What makes you think that? <laughs> He's just like how we how we deal with conflict in general in our relationship i just don't think he would have had like it just i don't think you would like i don't think at all you would have stayed i don't think you would have stayed if someone would have painted the scenario before him yes i would have <laughs> but here's the thing do you guys think that there's a double standard with this because i feel like it is absolutely unacceptable in a man's mind to think of his wife with another man right like it's like intolerable for guys but for girls we're almost like used to it and have to accept it does that make any sense to you guys a thousand percent okay yeah <laughs> mike's keeping quiet <laughs> <It's no. laughs> he knows is yeah, that I not true I, mike I, I, I think there's a little truth in also what, and maybe this is me just generalizing it, but like, you know, women have babies. Women are just, we, we're not at babies when we have colds. Like, I just don't think yeah. you guys are, so, you know, can don't carry, even take me down that carry the weight of that much pain. Like, I don't know if y'all are strong enough to do it. <laughs> like, we are strong individuals. You we are. birth babies. We have periods every month, mm -hmm. you know, deal with y'all's shit you mm -hmm. know what I mean like I we don't think we live with you guys <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> we live with you guys constantly not understanding us and not wanting to listen to us <laughs> I that there. No. <laughs> oh my god my favorite moment is like when Kevin at night he's like when you see me with my bowl of cereal I'm out I'm done don't don't even I don't need a honey do list he like I don't want to hear this has to get done or whatever so he gets in his bowl in his bed with a cereal bowl like the like it's hilarious how um you guys just can shut it off and we're like oh but we still have to do the laundry and handle this and handle that and whatever but you guys can just shut it down it's so easy for you guys it's taking a year to do their to-do list what is it and take a year to do their to-do list <laughs> So there's that too. Mike, well, Mike's turning up, red. You just give us another one. Yeah. We got to space it out. <laughs> do you call it a honey do list too? It, he has like this reminder thing on his phone, but I'll just take his phone and like add things in there. Like we forgot about like, this, you know, so it's just like, and then, but he, he checks it off when he wants to check it off. Mm -hmm. I, so I don't understand. Time. Like, so for us, like we have to get it done. I wish our mentalities were that, oh, we could just, you know, it'll be okay. Like, and you guys are just so chill. I want to be like you. I mean, I am more like you now. You know, I got a nice little thing called a brain tumor that just changed everything. But I so vividly remember having, you know, that really type A. I'm I'm like maybe not a type B. I've gone down a notch. But, um, but we have to get this shit done. And we can't live with it on our plate. And you guys are so cool with it. <laughs> it's you know i always tell jan i was like where's the fire 
like really does this have to get done right this second and you know for her yeah it does and no matter what it is and so it's funny because we're kind of different in the sense that on the weekends is when I'm like up ready to go and maybe it's just the way I grew up where it's like on the weekends that's when my parents are like yard work this that the other and so I'm kind of that way now I'm like okay weekends you know cut the grass kids let's do yard work let's pull some weeds let's do this stuff and during the week I'm a little bit more like oh. and then on the weekend is the only time Janet's actually I can't even say lazy because she doesn't really do anything that's lazy but she's a little bit more calm yeah so she's like can't you be like this during the week? I'm like, look, I like my ratio. Five days of chill, two <laughs> days of going hard. Yeah, Kevin calls it being greasy. So like a Saturday morning, if I don't want to get up and I'm still in my pajamas, just kind of rolling around the house, he calls it me being greasy. Greasy, that's amazing. That's yeah. really fun. Yeah, no, I just, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's not that there's a fire. It's not that there's urgency. All I ask for now, and this is my one thing, I'm like, you can, fine, do it on your timeline. But when I ask you to move something, I'd appreciate it if you actually moved it to the final spot, like where it belongs. Because most times, like I'd be like, do you mind moving this book or putting it away? And he'll go, yeah. Like, and then like walk away from it. And I'm like, ah, oh, like that's not actually where it goes. Like yeah. put it away. It's how hard is it to walk to the office and put it in the office, you know? So here's my thing. Okay. Here this we is go. so here fun. Go. I love it. You're going to can worms here <laughs> is, you know, maybe I'll have some clothes laying around or something in the, on the bathroom sink that I haven't put away yet. She'd be like, Hey, can you, you know, clean up your clothes or can you do this? I'm like, yeah, like, I'll get to it. And she'll have a whole pile of clothes that happened to be sitting right here, right now behind the screen. I just emptied my closet so I can just put this, fall this in. Is my point. <laughs> and I won't say anything. I'll say, I know she'll clean it up when she gets to it. Right. That's the point. We don't think that you'll clean it up because it stays there in the corner of the bed. Right. That's over but there. I also <laughs> trust my partner to clean up her mess. Okay. Um, how long has that stuff been sitting next to your <laughs> How long has that humidifier been sitting right here next to the it. bed? How long? <laughs> okay, next subject. <laughs> Dying. Well, in a different note, but like <laughs> part of the show, uh, part of your book, um, you guys talk about cleaning your side of the street. So we're talking about cleaning up. So let's transition into cleaning your side of the street because there are a few things in this book that there were so much amazing takeaway and advice but there are a few things that I'm going to hit on like cleaning your side of the street because I think it's really really poignant and um such a great take on things like I love the whole neighbor comparison so so share with everybody um you know that whole concept is something that we've heard from all the therapists that we've seen over the years individual and couples and it's basically own your own stuff right it's when you get an argument or you're trying to resolve conflict if you spend that time trying to convince the person to see it your way or convince them but you did this but you did that it's like no you come into conflict resolution be like look i'm sorry for what i did i can only can control what i control i can't control you or your feelings or what you're experiencing so it's just as long as your side of the street's clean like you're taking care of your business because you can't you can't make your partner apologize you can't make them feel a certain way so the earlier you get out of that mindset the more beneficial it is for especially conflict resolution hmm. Jana, thoughts no that's I, one of Jana's sarcastic passive sarcasms right uh-huh, uh-huh. Hmm. no i mean i i totally agree with you i think you know it is important to clean your side of the street but it's also important to for the other person to realize the stuff they put on their street <laughs> <laughs> So it's also them coming to the other person's side of the street and being like, I'm really sorry. I just shit on your side of the street. Let me help you pick that up and leaning in with empathy and acknowledging that side of it too, where it's like, I just dumped a load on your side. Yeah. So let me help you clean that up. And that's, you know, I think a huge part of it too. This is like in the moment where I feel like, so my show's called Better Together. Mm -hmm. So me and my husband have been joking lately, better apart. (laughs) Like, it's so much work to keep a marriage healthy. And like, I don't know. I feel like men and women are so opposite. It's so challenging. Debating lesbian, but it's all good. I mean, no, seriously. Like, I feel like they got it right. (laughs) Right? We want to talk about everything to like, you know, like to the littlest degree. They don't want to talk about anything. They're just kind of like, give me my sports center. Give me my pizza. 
and my recliner and I'm happy. And we're like so much more intricate. But it's funny, like even this Have morning. A date night in a few weeks, like, you know. I'm, I'm dying. I still haven't gotten a response from my husband. So, um, so last night, so we're in the middle of a renovation. So that, that happened too. So my husband was like, no, so I-, I tore up the second floor of the house. Don't come back. And I'm like, okay. And then it was like the fires, everything was happening. He's like, really, you don't want to be here. Like, just stay back there, have your peace, have your like, you know, rejuvenation. Okay, cool. So last night, I swear God intervened. Cause he was like, let me help you. And I said, hey, can I see some stuff? Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> and so when he showed me the shower, I saw that there was a, a major hiccup. <laughs> and he's so upset right now. And so what happens is he sees that he there's a flaw, there's a mistake. And but now he's mad that I questioned him on whether the marble was too dark. I'm like, oh, I thought it was going to be like a lighter marble. And this one looks like a little darker. And He's so upset with me (laughs) for questioning him. And I said, well, here's the thing. This is my bathroom too. And I'm a girl and I've had a vision of a dream bathroom that if I walk into this, yes, it's going to be better than the shit we had before, but it's still not going to be what I wanted. So you have to take into account the fact that I want what I want too. And you know we're better together honey so i had a text i'm like i just want you to know i appreciate everything you're doing because he's in the middle of a renovation he's taking care of my parents like taking care of the dogs he's doing everything and he's so happy for me and my breakthroughs i'm having over here and the fun apple picking adventures and shit i'm getting to do while he's suffering in dust and dirt i'm like i just want you to know i appreciate everything you're doing you know but you know we're better together right like if i didn't see that that would have been a massive problem that right now is a massive problem anyway because you're gonna have to redo the entire shower but at least you don't have to redo the shower after the whole bathroom's done right one thousand percent so he should have at least been to you and be like is this the right like double check because we would have double checked like does this look good to you and that's where i think guys like they don't do the double checking they don't like Mm -hmm. they don't and it's like well it's kind of your fault then, well it's like you know? when you do so much at once you're bound to make some mistakes right yeah, shit's just sure. gonna happen but mike you're putting your hands in your head i want to know your perspective because it's probably kevin's perspective and i want to be sensitive um because you guys talk about knowing triggers in the book so i know his triggers are his sensitivities to me not feeling seeming appreciative enough or knowing how much he's really undertaking to make me happy so tell me what i'm doing wrong so men against popular belief we are sensitive creatures Mm -hmm. okay but sensitive and a similar thing happened with jan and i early in quarantine i built this little platform out back for these two storage bins for like our pool equipment stuff and i was like you know i was excited about it i thought it looked great I was like, hey, honey, come, you know, come look. And she comes out and she's like, huh. And then she asks like a question. I don't even remember what the question was. And I'm like, you know, then I start going like, okay, it's not good enough. This isn't what she wanted. She had a whole different vision and, and all of this. And so, and we, we got in a discussion about it later. I was like, look, if you would have come out and just said, hey, I appreciate you doing this. I had a different vision in mind. You know, maybe we could do this, but just validating what we're doing first. So if you told Kevin, honey, you're kicking ass. I appreciate you watching the parents and the dogs and you're out there and I'm not here and you, you know, you're doing all this stuff. I appreciate it. Just so you know, it's not the tile I was necessarily looking at. Can we look at other options? Is that possible? Just so we feel like we're still making you happy because we do want to make you happy. <clears throat> and so it's just all, all it is is just switching that around, just validating first. And then we're open to hearing what you have to say. Mm. And we don't feel completely chopped down at the legs that we just messed everything up. Yeah. <clears throat> I think I completely chopped him down at the legs. I'm pretty good at that, I think, unfortunately. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, because we're like, we're like to the point people, right? Girls, we're like, no, doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad. But like along the way, Mike, I do, I text him and say like yesterday I took my mom to her MRI and I'm like, thank you so much. You know, you're, you're so amazing for like being so patient and helping my mom and whatever. So I do appreciate along the way. It's just in that moment when you're going to offer criticism, I think is when you really got to start with the appreciation. 
Got yeah. it. Got it. Okay. Noted. Noted. I like that. So knowing triggers, let's talk about that because that's a big, um, a big thing that I loved in the book. Yeah, that's one, you know, we try to make a note of, of happy triggers too, right? Because triggers have such a negative connotation to them that we didn't want it to be all negative. We want those happy triggers to come, you know, into your mind and those be conscious where, you know, I share one where just a couple months ago, I was out back mowing the grass and you know, our kids were playing outside, the dogs were running, running around, some neighborhood kids are over. And I was like, it was like that white picket fence kind of moment. And I was just like mowing the gra- grass with a smile on my face. And I was like, this is what life's all about. I was like, this is awesome right now. This is making me happy. So to focus on those moments and not let the moments of, you know, past trauma or, you know, conflicts in your relationship, but those negative triggers to really kind of guide re- where your relationship goes. So it's a mix of both. Yeah. Do you guys, have you very much defined your triggers? Like, so if if someone's triggered, you can go to a happy trigger? I Not in the moment. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I definitely don't think it's in the moment. Um, I mean, you know, we get triggered all the time. I get triggered, obviously, with the, the past and stuff. Um, you know, he gets triggered with feeling like he's not good enough or his, his shame is being triggered. So mm-hmm. I think it's, it's hard to have conflict and triggers. Um, it's just about then kind of taking a, a step back and... Um, and then coming together when you're not so heightened because you're not, uh, it's not a good place to have a conversation or conflict when you're triggered. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things where over time we we're still working at it, but we've gotten better at staying ahead of our triggers or at least expressing them to each other. Like, Hey, I'm feeling triggered right now around X, Y, or Z instead of them coming out passively and you know making comments or reacting i know i'm guilty of that of just maybe reacting without expressing what's going on with me internally and that's just more the work that i have to do you know as a man as a man and learning to express my emotions in a healthier way so that's something that we've learned and we're continuing to get better at and that we want people to take away from the book too is like treat your partner like a teammate Mm -hmm. lean into them and express hey i'm being triggered for this reason this is what's coming up for me can you help me with this yeah do you guys think you have uh, any more kids in sight? I don't know. I don't think so. But, you know, you never know. But I don't think so. I think we're done. Okay. Um, I have to, of course, talk a little Dancing with the Stars with you because uh, it's a new season and um, we both got to do it. And it's funny. Um, Who's your partner again? Derek Huff. Derek, that's right. Yep. Yeah. And I remember when you were in the middle of it, um, Val was texting me that you were injured and you needed help. I'm like, oh, everybody at Dancing with the Stars knows I was probably the most injured ever. And so they all send everybody to me and I'm like, got you. I'm like, okay, what's your injury? Okay, you need. So I was looking back at our text and I was like sending you to Dr. Sheps. Did you ever go to him? Um, Yeah, I went to, I mean, everything you said I did. So (laughs) thank you so much for helping me through that injury. Of course. And you were just so sweet and so kind. I never forgot that. So thank you. Oh, of course. So when you look back at your dancing experience, do you look back at it fondly? I actually think, I realize we both came in the same place too. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Right before, like, we we made it to semifinals because they've changed how it is now. So we made it to the semifinals and then got knocked out. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I loved it. I mean, I wish we, you know, we were separated at the time when I was doing the show. So I wish that we would have been in a better place because it would have been nice to have him cheering me on and um, because it was something I always wanted to do. So to have, you know, I, it's hard to look back on that memory because it brings up like the triggers of where we were at then. Um, but I had the best time ever. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Uh I yeah I loved it it's it's weird though because this season when I'm watching you know I it's to not have fans out there like for me that's that was I think why I was so nervous but also why maybe I did better too Mm -hmm. um so it's pretty cool how they made the stage look but I I I don't know I I would be I was bummed I I'm bummed for the contestants that they don't have that energy 
Yeah, I thought about that for the first time last night watching. So I was super excited. Yeah. I wore my Mickey shirt or my mini shirt. Was it mini or Mickey? I think it was mini. I think it was mini. Let's just say it's Just mini. randomly yesterday. I've been here for like however long and I pulled that shirt out and then I see Dancing with the Stars, Disney edition. I'm like, oh shit, I'm totally in costume. This is perfect. But it was the first <laughs> time I was watching and I realized, oh, they don't have to have the stress of an audience there. Like, they're just like rehearsing. If if they can like put yeah. themselves in that mentality, this is just the rehearsal. Um, it's easier to kind of buy, you know. See, I need the like because my rehearsals were always terrible. Mm -hmm. So I needed to know that like okay, we have I have people like holding me to the fire. Yeah. So, but no, I mean I think everyone's doing. I'm kind of glad to see Carol go. I not like wasn't the biggest fan of her in the Tiger King thing. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I was just like, okay, I'm done with, with you. But again, I don't know her, so I don't want to judge her, but you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, she's not my favorite, wasn't my favorite. Um, I think Caitlin's doing amazing. Yeah. It's interesting, the the final vote going to the judges. Do you like that? I do, yeah. <clears throat> I do like that. Do you like it? I do. Again, last night was the first time I was really kind of realizing because when you have Anne Heche and um, Carol Baskin left in the bottom two, it could have been so easy for the fans to pick Carol for other reasons, right, than her just dancing ability. So it's nice for someone who is really on that journey and progressed maybe more to have a chance. I agree. And I feel bad, though, because they, they, um, they started doing that after Bobby Bones won. And I think people were uh upset that he won because he wasn't the best dancer mm. uh, and then the next year they started doing the el elimination like that um and i don't know yeah. if it was because of that i mean i i love bobby personally i think he did great his energy was amazing and he i mean he had the fans through the roof but i feel like they're doing that because at the end of the day they do want the best dancer to win and the best person that is progressing yeah i didn't see maybe i haven't been watching but I've only seen it this season. I thought it was like one of their new things in here. Oh yeah, it didn't start till after Bobby won. That's so, so. funny. So you I mean, I, and I love Bobby. I'm so glad he won. Um, but was he the best dancer? No, but he yeah. was. He had the heart. But I think they they did that because there was such like outrage. Yeah. That he won. I thought Jeannie Mai was amazing last night. Like, oh, I didn't catch that one. Yeah, she um she's really she's coming up from behind. I was like, okay. She's got it. I love her. I she's love her too. she's she's a good she's a good I one. Didn't, I didn't catch hers. I saw Chriselle's, um, Chris Caitlin's, and then a few of the other ones. Caitlin was the final, right? The the Cinderella. No, that was Chriselle. Oh, Chriselle. Did she get the highest she scores? Got, she got higher than I think she deserved, but mm. she did though. yeah. I just I was kind That's of watching and doing stuff, and so. I just saw her. She literally looked like a princess and came out so, so elegant. Ooh. You were so good, by the way. Like, you were so elegant, and you just had this, like, like you, you know, you were so in each dance. It was, like, amazing. Very kind to say that, but... Mm, mm, mm. What? <laughs> what? So uncomfortable to dance in those heels. I had said the hardest. I felt like I was just, like, a, a, a puppy like in heels wait mike have you gone back and watched her dances have you guys done the youtube deep dive what? no but I, you know mike. i saw some of them i saw you know one of them live i went at the, at the very end but i want her to do an all-stars because i want to recreate that memory for us and for yeah. her and I, I would have so much fun like being there for her and like rooting her on because i love watching her get into something because she wants to be the best like no matter what it is, that's like kind of why I don't want her to pick up golf. <laughs> golf is kind of my thing. I'm afraid like she's gonna be so competitive, she's gonna end up being better than me. Yeah, so I'm like ah, that's my thing, honey. So uh, you know, I really hope she has the opportunity to do that in the future. That's so funny. Would know, you do I... it, Mike? If uh, if she did it, would you do it as well? Ooh. You know, great question. But the thing is, just like I don't want her to be better at golf than me. I wouldn't want to go out and be a better dancer than her outstage her when she got fourth place semifinals that would just be a whole memorable so. hilarious that'd be another I think they therapy should session do a couples where it's like couples dance together and like the like gleb or val like they're your 
they're your teacher. So uh-huh. they're teaching like the couple how to dance. I think that'd be kind of cool. That oh my God. Be that would be the biggest hot mess ever. Oh my God. So many fights between the couples. <laughs> like, oh my God. Stop, like, <laughs> we yeah. fight as it is with our partners or like ha- there's so much like frustration it would be gold yeah like, no just tell it be gold. oh for sure you know you're you're genius this idea is genius like me and kevin so kevin doesn't want to dance because he's like you're good i'm gonna suck and because i was like let's take ballroom classes it'll be so romantic he's like no no <laughs> i and first of all he's like i don't need another thing to fail at and i don't need to suck next to you and the truth is when you know and they don't it's challenging that's why i always was empathetic to a derek because he had to deal with my lame ass all the time and he's like just do it and i'm like i want to but i can't i'm trying i know that was the same thing god's always like stronger and i'm like i literally can't like be stronger at this i'm like i'm not a dancer yeah i don't know what i'm doing you are so hard on yourself i want to prescribe a deep dive for you guys you've got to see how amazing she was like literally you you really were you did a beautiful job like oh the hands i wasn't really good with the hands i wasn't as elegant i feel like we did a good deep dive with maria oh she was i was like girl what it was so much fun. It was fun. Yeah, so but Mike, you got to do it. Derek always used to tell me, don't worry about the scores. You're dancing for your YouTube memories. And Ooh, that was I, such good yeah. advice because I've only done a couple deep dives. But when I do, it's like such a magical experience to go back and say, wow, I couldn't put one foot in front of the other. I was a hot mess. And then he turned me into a dancer. Now, am I a dancer on the level of, you know, whatever, you know, whoever I would think no but for me I became a dancer and you are a dancer for sure and you can take that skill into any acting experience and it's so cool and then I would be remiss not to mention One Tree Hill because we also both were One Tree Hillers it's so funny to think of how much people love that show still like when they find out that I'm on it or was on it for a season they go bananas yeah, people are like the One Tree Hillers are nuts. Mm-hmm. They're amazing though. Like anytime I ever played a show, we had like our wind up. It's like, where are my One Tree Hillers at? And it's just the like the entire show. Like they're they're awesome. And they're it's it keeps getting refound and I think it's on Hulu now or Netflix. I don't mm-hmm. know which Hulu. Um so it's just, you know, the younger generations watching it and you know, I had friends, uh, a couple friends just rewatched it and it's it's interesting. How <laughs> long were you on for? Three and a half years. Wow. wow. So you lived in Wilmington all that time? Did. But I was flying back and forth to Nashville the last year. So got it. Oh, I loved yeah. Wilmington. It was so pretty. I mean, it's great, but not for like, you know, it's a small town. Yeah. I was only there for like six or seven months, I think. So it was perfect for yeah. me. So what I are what are your like memories of that time? Um oh man. Um we went to Wrightsville Beach a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was that taco place there. Um, you know, there really wasn't much to do. So it was either the beach or you went to the movie theaters or we'd go to J. Crew because that was like the only store. <laughs> that, so, so Sophia and I would go shop at J. Crew. Um, yeah, I was going to say, who were you hanging out with from the. I the lived cast? with Sophia in Austin. Oh, cool. So um, I lived with them and then I lived with by myself uh, the last two seasons. So um, I lived. Uh, like right over by Main Street and so yeah I mean it was, it was fun it was a good time but I did um, I started to go to Nashville and fly back and forth from there so got it I could fun times well guys mm-hmm. thank you so much mm-hmm. for taking the time to chat with me and um, and share everything you guys are um, super fun together you remind me of me and Kevin <laughs> <laughs> date um, night soon seriously seriously we'll we should night. we should do a podcast together that would be fun that would be so we'd love to have you guys on ours yes 100%. oh yeah that's oh, right yes. we should wind down so, baby wind down with us. Yes. Yes, we do, here's really the fun. question do we do it in the midst of our renovation when yes. he wants to murder me now <laughs> we've been good by the way all the way to last night and this morning i saw him and he was just in rare form on facetime and i'm like are you okay honey and he's like yeah and i'm like you, you don't look okay. Um, I sent you a little picture of a cute Bichon I want. 
<laughs> knowing I've triggered him, I'm like, okay, let's send him puppy pictures. That'll make him happy. Nothing was making him happy. Um, but uh, you yeah, know, we'll, we'll, we'll schedule you uh, for a session on wind down then. Perfect. I love it. Guys, their new book, The Good Fight, is available wherever books are sold. You can check out their podcast where uh, Kevin and I will have our throw down and perhaps really be a part after <laughs> called Wind Down. You can get that on Apple Podcasts. And of course, you can find Jana on Kramer Girl on Instagram at Kramer Girl. Mike, are you not on Instagram? No, ma'am. I just live vicariously through this one. She does enough for both of us. So God bless you. You are lucky. <laughs> All yes. right. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Thanks, we really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Right there. Guys. It was so fun. All right. So fun. Oh my god, I can't wait for you and Kev. Oh my god. Yeah. I just cracked my back in like 18 places. Ooh. Kevin hates me right now. I didn't know that. You didn't tell me that this morning. We didn't even have time. That's true. I had to like prep and whatever, so. Jeff, Are you guys good you see him make put in a good word. I feel like put in a good word wait, for say that me, again. Jeff. Say that one more time. Put in a good word for me when you see <laughs> him. Oh, I will. I will. Be like on the show today, Maria was talking about how amazing you are. Or maybe just say, loves no, you. maybe say yesterday. Yes. Ah. You know, Maria was really talking you up yesterday on the show, so he doesn't listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was, fun, that was fun, though. right now. That was fun. He hates me because he's redirecting his anger because of the disaster that right. he's having to be in the midst of. Because right. it's going to take us back three weeks, probably, he said. Dang. And oh. he doesn't even know if these guys are available to fix it. Yeah. Wait, so be what, glad what was he it? did, though. It's the shower was done completely wrong. Not even a taste thing, like a logistical thing. Well, thank God you caught it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Yeah. He's, he's happy I caught it, but unhappy right. with the situation. Right. So. I can speak for a guy here. I think <laughs> he's he is actually redirecting his frustration with himself at you. Totally. And if I'm going to play relationship therapist here, which feels like very dangerous territory to do with both of my bosses, but here I go. <laughs> um, I think he was probably initially upset that you weren't warmer about the mistake, mm -hmm. but now I bet he's upset more because of his own frustration and security with the mistake than totally. I do. And as someone who's done projects and messed them up, I can speak from experience. So do I text him and say, you are enough? <laughs> you are valued. You are loved. I appreciate you. Like there's just like a whole list of affirmations. Mm. I think that'd be nice. Actually, I, I think mean, you I could did. say like, you know, yeah, oh, I think oh, that I think we have a text back. <gasps> oh. Oh. I said, Boo, I love you. Sorry it sucks. That's Sorry perfect. if I'm not coming off appreciative. I've been dreaming of a certain bathroom for years. I'm just trying to make sure I will be happy. I've been Pinteresting stuff for years too. I have a vision and you know, and you can execute it, I know. Ah, beautiful, huh? beautiful. It's just gonna take some work together. Mm -hmm. Look, if we didn't discuss, we would have had a nightmare. We are better together. That's right, that's right you are. He said, understood, just please temper comments and stay in gratitude. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the worst time in US history. We absolutely must upgrade. Um, we have mom, dad, dogs, and other biz ventures. I'm doing this with resale in mind first and will not fail. And yes, bathroom will be better your way. So this is a balance. Just try to temper all and have appreciation, appreciative bedside manner when people go above and beyond. Appreciative Long bedside next manner. week here. I'm back to full labor to get this done. Only way. Kevo. Oh, Boo, I love you. I'm sorry if I came off like that appreciative. I was actually really good about it. The only thing, I think the part that really like stung him was like, is the tile a little dark? Yeah, right, right. It was the oh, by the way, you the, th the shower's wrong. No, it was the tile first. Oh, it was the tile. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So had I seen the accident first or the mistake first, um, I wouldn't have piled on with the tile. Right. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You that was a beautiful apology though. What are you gonna do? Listen, I try. You did. It's all good. We'll get you guys on wind down and yeah. I'm excited for Hilarious. that. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, we'll make that happen. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us <laughs> for our couples therapy day. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> if you like today's episode, it was recent, but if you haven't checked it out, our couples chat with Jen and Jared Padalecki was also super fun last week. Um, if you're new to this podcast, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being with us. Hit subscribe. Join us over on Patreon for other exclusive amazing events. Tomorrow, we're going to be featuring... 
three-time New York Times bestselling author Rachel Hollis, whose new book, Didn't See That Coming, has practical tips to weather grief and loss. Man, there were so many things I was like marking in this book. So um, I hope you guys check it out. In the meantime, you can follow us at Kramer Girl, at Jeffrey Crane Graham, at Kels Meyer too. Of course, at Better Together with Maria. And remember, be nice people. (laughs) Be gracious when talking to your husband. Yes. Make good choices and be present. (laughs)